Have you ever wondered what all the hype is hmm. about seeing thumbnails like this and this and wondered how a plant that has opium-like effects is even legal? In this video, we're gonna find out what's going on with this fascinating medicinal herb and learn the truth about its pain relieving and sedative properties. Let's get started. Wild lettuce or Lactuca verosa are a group of plants in the genus Lactuca that commonly occur in the wild around the world. The word Lactuca comes from the Latin root lactis, which means milk. It gets this name because the plant, when cut, exudes a white, milky substance. The grocery store lettuce we all know and love is part of this genus and was cultivated from prickly wild lettuce, or Lactuca soriola, thousands of years ago. Because of its traditional use as a treatment for pain and sleeplessness, common names for wild lettuce include opium lettuce or poor man's opium. However, it's important to note that wild lettuce is not an opiate. Huh. No chemicals in the plant act on our opioid receptors. One of the reasons why many people actually prefer it over opioid agonist medications that cause addiction and can have severe withdrawal symptoms. It has a long history of medicinal and ritualistic use, dating back to many ancient civilizations. It was used by the Egyptians, Greeks, and the Romans for its sedative and pain relieving properties. It was often brewed into teas or tinctures to treat conditions such as insomnia, anxiety, coughs, and joint pain. In this video, we're gonna go over its history, the medicinal uses of the plant, and how to properly identify it. So sit tight and let's learn about Lactuca verosa. History. Lettuces were farmed in Egypt originally as far back as 2680 BC. The Egyptians selectively bred them from wild prickly lettuce into a food crop with succulent leaves and seeds rich in oil. Lettuce was considered a sacred plant and believed to enhance sexual stamina. Its use in religious ceremonies is depicted in images on the walls of tombs and in paintings. The Egyptians passed lettuces on to the Greeks around 50 AD, who shared them with the Romans. Reportedly, the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus attributed his recovery from a severe illness to infusions of wild lettuce and upon recovery erected an altar and a statue in its honor. It was also listed in the Canon of Medicine, a five-book encyclopedia compiled by the Persian physician and philosopher Avicenna, which was completed in 1025 CE and used into the 17th century. Wild lettuce is believed to have been introduced to the United States from Europe. The exact date of its arrival is not well documented, but it likely occurred during the early colonial period when Europeans began exploring and settling in North America. Before the Victorian period, wild lettuce was known as a painkiller and sedative. In the 19th century, the desiccated lactosent juice, lacticarium, was used as a sedative and analgesic. It was used in kidney disorders and for amorylating painful uterine contractures and for generalized edema and icterus due to its diuretic effect. In 1917, the Servo Company printed in its catalog of medicinal plants that wild lettuce was highly esteemed to quiet coughing and allay nervous irritation and is a potent remedy to produce sleep and was to be used when opium and other narcotics are objectionable. This was written at a time when opium and cocaine could still be obtained over the counter. What? Uses. The leaves and stems, lacticarium, and the oil from the seeds are all used medicinally. Leaves and stems are traditionally infused as tea or made into an extract. In homeopathy, a tincture of the plant has been used for laryngitis, bronchitis, asthma, coughing, and urinary tract infections. Wild lettuce contains two main compounds, lactosin and lactocopecrin, that act on the central nervous system. Wild lettuce has the highest concentration of lactocopecrin of all plants. Also dandelion and chicory roots are other sources of this compound. In addition to its sedative and analgesic or pain relieving effects, lacticopecrine is believed to act as an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. This means that it blocks cholinesterase enzymes responsible for slowing communication between nerve cells, which in simple terms mean that it dulls pain signals sent to the brain. Hey guys, Blake here. If you're enjoying my content and want to help the channel out for free, please hit that like and subscribe button and help me get to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me and let's get back to the video. Identification. Lactuca verosa exhibits two primary growth forms. First, it forms a basal rosette or small cluster of leaves near the ground to establish a root system. As it matures, a tall stalk emerges, reaching heights of up to three meters or nine feet. Along the stalk, smaller leaves are arranged, providing surface area for photosynthesis. At the apex of the stalk, clusters of small yellow flowers develop, eventually producing seeds. Variability in growth can arise from environmental factors and genetic differences, leading to adaptations and response to varying conditions. This flexible growth pattern enables wild lettuce to thrive in diverse habitats, from open fields to forest edges. Foliage. The plant exhibits simple leaves, those on the stalk are alternating and often clasping. 
The leaves are deeply lobed and can vary in shape, ranging from lanceolate to ovate. These leaves are often deeply serrated or lobed, giving them a distinct appearance. Small hair-like structures called trichomes are found on the underside of each leaf along the midrib and are pivotal in distinguishing between species within the genus. These trichomes vary in density, size, and distribution, offering valuable insights into species identification. Midrib. The cross-section shape of the midrib is triangular, though it's important to acknowledge that plant morphology can exhibit variations, and there may be instances where the midrib of wild lettuce leaves appear somewhat angular or irregular. Factors such as genetic variability, environmental conditions, and growth stage can influence the shape and structure of the plant's tissues, including the midrib. Flowers. Wild lettuce produces small, inconspicuous flowers that are characteristic of plants in the Asteraceae family. The flowers are typically small and yellow in color. They are arranged in clusters at the ends of branching stems or in the axials of the upper leaves. Each individual flower consists of several florets grouped together in a composite flower head, known as a capitulum or inflorescence. The flower head is composed of both ray florets, which resemble petals and are often sterile, and disc florets, which are tubular and fertile. The inflorescence of wild lettuce is often branched and can be somewhat elongated or compact, depending on the species and growing conditions. The arrangement of the flower heads along the stems contributes to the overall appearance of the plant when in bloom. Wild lettuce typically blooms during the summer months, with the flowering period extending from late spring to early fall, depending on the geographic location and climate. Following pollination, the fertilized flowers of wild lettuce develop into small dry fruits known as achenes. Each achene is equipped with a tuft of fine hairs, or a pappus, that aids in wind dispersal. Latex. The sap or latex of wild lettuce is a milky white substance that oozes from the stems and leaves of the plant when they are cut or injured. It appears as a white or slightly yellowish liquid with a thick consistency. When exposed to air, it may darken slightly in color. The texture of the sap is sticky and viscous, similar to the latex found in other plants. It has a faint, slightly bitter odor. The taste of the sap is bitter and slightly acrid. It is not considered palatable and is generally not consumed for its flavor, but medicinal purposes. Toxic lookalikes. The lobed leaves of wild lettuce can sometimes bear a resemblance to the poisonous Carolina horse nettle. As with any food foraged from the wild, you must be 100% positive in your identification before proceeding to consume or use it medicinally. I hope you enjoyed this video on the history, medicinal uses, and how to identify wild lettuce, and will add it to your apothecary of useful wild plants. Please like and subscribe for more plant videos like this, and check out my new video on 27 herbalism terms you need to know. And I'll see you in the next video.